Hey, welcome back. And today in part two, and you can see part one's finished printing there that we designed yesterday, I'm gonna do the brackets that actually sit on here, you can see it, that sit on here, and that the monitors are gonna mount to. So stay tuned for that. So yesterday we drew the mount that's now printed and standing behind me here. And that worked out quite nicely. The area that, or the section where the monitors sit on actually turns nice and freely. And the idea is that, that this one doesn't actually move too much, but that this one can actually rotate through about you know 270 degrees so that I can actually turn the monitor and see it from multiple angles. <clears throat> so it does do that quite nicely. The part that I need to design today, and I've actually played with the design last night while this was printing, and I've got a good idea of what I want to do. So I'm going to go through the concepts of what I used in the design, and maybe let me just pull it up so you can see. Uh, that's the... There we go. That's the design there, and if I do that to switch it over, that's kind of what I'm thinking of. So, a mount with a... Uh, that's not... Uh, it's because I moved everything around. But essentially, that'll be there. This will be inside this area here. So, the ball slides onto the shaft over here and these two sections here actually if you see that have space for a few nuts and bolts and that actually clamps onto the ball to lock this part into position and it's got some holes that run through here so that those can actually slide on on that and I lock it into place, this part here then screws onto the plate. The plate then has the four holes in that actually goes onto the back of the monitor. So that's what I was kind of thinking of. One or two small changes that I'll make here is that I'm going to cut this ball in half along that line there, so it's easier to put that over the shaft, and that little bit of clamping force that that'll give me means that when this clamps down on it it'll actually clamp down on the shaft as well and not move so i want to get it so that it actually locks into place quite tightly and maybe just a bit of cleaning up so i'm gonna start this from from scratch again i might refer back to this once or twice to to just you know, clear it up a bit there are a few mistakes I made that hole there isn't in the middle so that needs to actually rotate around and be a little bit higher up and the other mistake I made is you'll see this shaft is not in the middle of the sphere and that's actually where we're going to start so start a new drawing and let's have a look and make sure I can see the origin because you want to see that. And on this axis, I'm going to start a sketch. So what I'm going to do is draw a rectangle and I'm going to draw a center rectangle. Which means I can here go and say 25 points. Let's go with 4. And that one 25.4. Is going to give me that rectangle and it's going to be in the center of that all right I'm then going to take that and I'm going to if I can right click on it press pull and I'm going to do that symmetrically and pull it out both sides and let's give it about 90 okay I'm gonna back go back onto this axis here and then here I'm gonna create a sphere on that plane in the middle and 
let's see what it looks like at 55. I'm going to do a new body. And 55 is quite big, but I don't really want to undersize it. I'm, I'm worried about the stress on this corner here. If that's too thin, that it might cause a bit more strain on it. Although I am clamping down from the outside, so I think that'll be all right. So there's that sphere sitting around there. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get enough force on there. So I am going to make that sphere a little bit bigger. So let's make it 55. Okay, that just feels a little bit better. All right, then from the top, I'm now going to, let's do it as a sketch from here. And I think what I'll do is again, a center point rectangle from the middle out so that it sits nice and evenly over both of those. And let's make it 30 wide. Mm, length is not really important. Important. Let's see what 70. Um, 80. I don't want to end up with that being too small. All right. I'm going to stop the sketch. And then this one I'm going to press pull. And again, I'm going to do symmetric. And if I pull that out to 40, that should give me that. And I'm going to say a new body again. All right. So that's the basics of it. What I'm going to do on here now is on the top, let's do a sketch again. This time I'm going to go on this top plane here and from the middle I'm going to do another center rectangle and I'm going to make it let's go with four millimeters there so it's got quite a bit of space to move in fact let's see six mm, it's kind of on that line of where might start this forming but I want I don't want to end up with it having not enough space to actually clamp down because I'm gonna cut that other area out I needed to clamp more so that that should be fine and 82 will give me enough all right so I'm gonna stop that sketch go back here select that press pull down is now going to cut right so the next thing i'm showing you now is that if you look here it's cutting through everything so it's going to cut through the ball through this i don't want it to cut all of that all i wanted to do is cut this one which was the third one i drew so that's only body three so now if you look you'll see the ball is still in there it's not cutting the ball which means it's not cutting that either there you go so it's only cut this body here and left the other two intact. If I turn that one off, you'll see that the shaft was also still all the way through. So that stays as, as it should do. <clears throat> all right. Now, if you look at that other one, it had a rounding on it. So I'm going to press pull on here. And... I know that's 80, so I'm going to make it 40. That one and that one, and that's going to give me a nice constant rounding all the way through. Okay. So we're going to take that one, <coughs> modify it. I'm going to cut and I'm going to use the sphere as the tool. I'm going to keep tools. Okay, and that's going to cut the one. 
and then I'm going to repeat that for the other one. And now if I turn all of that off, that's going to give me those two outer shapes that, that clamp onto the sphere. Capacity control, and I'll turn that down to about 70. And 70, I'll be able to see inside, and there you can see the sphere inside, which is what I'm looking for here. All right, so we'll turn those back on. The next thing I'm going to do is cut the hole through the middle of that. And again, I'm going to keep that because I want to keep that, that shaft down the middle, even though I don't need to see it anymore. Now, <clears throat> the reason I cut the shaft out of the sphere after I cut it out of these is because if I didn't and I left that in here, it would have actually left that inside part of these in there as well. Uh, if you'll remember from the previous video, it left that half moon area in the middle of this, uh, in the middle of the, remember in here, it left the inside of this, it left that half moon in there. So I cut it this way around to, to do that. It's easy enough to fix if you had to. The next thing I'm going to do is again sketch on this plane and I'm going to do all about the center rectangles today. So let's do that at that height. And this is to actually cut the middle of that circle out. And if I cut that much out of it, it's going to be way too much. If I just do one millimeter, it's going to actually cut two millimeters because it, it does that to both sides. And again, I'm going to select the objects to cut. And I want to make sure that I'm only cutting the sphere. So I've unselected the other bodies, so it's only that. Okay, so I'm gonna cut two millimeters out of the middle of the sphere, which is gonna give me some space that when these clamp down from the sides, the ball is actually gonna press down into the shaft and bite onto that. There we go. So like that. <clears throat> right, so next thing to do is do another sketch from the top. Uh, let's go in here and close enough all 
All right. So I've drawn the outline up there. Press pull, and this time I'm just going all the way down. And I'll go down to the bottom of that. Make sure that doesn't interfere, which it doesn't. Okay, and right. Time for something new again. Construct uh, mid plane between here and there is going to give me a line right down the middle. And uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another mid plane. Let's see where it is if I go from here to that one and see where the middle of that is. Uh, it's actually not bad. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. All right, so I'll put it there, uh, which means I've got to do the other side again. So construct mid plane between that and that is going to give me the other one. Okay, so what I'm going to put in there, I'm going to take a cylinder on here and one and all the way through and this time I do want to cut all the bodies because I want them to be aligned and the other one And what that's going to do is actually allow me to just put an 8mm shaft through there and because of all the 3D printing stuff, 8mm shafts is something I've got quite a bit of so that's the reason I made that size. I'm just going to put that through and that'll allow these middle sections just to float and sit where they need to be. Right, so <clears throat> what's left is to put those holes in. Now, a quick way for me to get that line down the middle is actually put in a mid plane, which is going to give me a line right on the center line and I'm going to select there and I'm going to drag it to get the line all the way through let's go with four because I'm going to put quite a big bolt through there Point one, and in fact, let's make it point two so that they actually slide through nicely. Right, and I'm going to take that and I'm going to cut the hole all the way through again. Did I cut that all the way through? I did cut it all the way through. <clears throat> all right, so the next thing I've got to do here is let me turn the construction lines off and I'm going to turn the origin off so you can see what I'm going to do next. One through there may or may not be enough. So what I'm going to do is create 
a pattern and I'm going to create a circular pattern. And I have to turn the origin back on again. And faces, objects, I want that face. And I want that face. The axis is the middle. I selected the origin line, that one there. So it goes around and that'll give me three of those. If I did five, six, so I won't be able to use that one. So I'm actually gonna just turn it off. But it does mean I've got the same way as I would have the, the three there, but I've got two extra in here for just in case. So when I say okay, that then gives me five places I can stick a bolt through to actually lock this down and lock it into place. This will bolt to the area that the monitor clamps onto. Okay, now speaking of which, that has to go into the middle here. So let's go and create a sketch again, a rectangle and another center rectangle. This time I'm going to make it 120 by 120, which is fine. I have measured it, so I know that that is correct. And that gives me the plates. I'm going to control both of those, press, pull, and what I'm going to cut that out of is probably 18 millimeter fiber board. So I'm just going to make it 18 and be done with it. Then I'm going to construct the offset plane. So construct offset plane from there. 10 down, uh, I've got the construction lines are turned off, all right, from there, construct offset plane, 10 in, and that's going to give me the four corners, although I probably don't need all of that. So on here, turn the construction back on so I know where I'm putting it. There, I'm going to do a, it's a 4.2. And it's a cut. And make sure I'm not cutting anything else in the back. Cut. And then I can turn the construction lines off again so I can actually see. And from here, I'm going to create a pattern again, a rectangular pattern. And it's going to be two and two and 100 and 100. And the direction is going to be that direction and that direction. Uh, it's very annoying when it does that. 100 across to 100 down. Okay, and that's the actual four mounting holes. And I know that because I measured the back of the monitor. And at 10, that's going to give me a nice rounding on that. There, there, and there. Oh, now the question is... Ah. And you'll see what I've done there is I've actually joined those two together, which I 
don't want because that's not what I'm after. So, if I go here, edit the feature, instead of join, I'm going to say new body. Okay, and now, all right. So what I did there on the timeline at the bottom here, I went back to where that extruded feature was, selected it, edited the feature, and on the edited feature, I changed it from a join to a new body, which then corrected that. All right. And we are just about done. Last thing I want to do is put a couple of holes through here to actually bolt that other part to here. Now, if I was printing it, I could have obviously done it as one part, uh, but I'm not printing it, so I need to do it there. And I'm going to do four millimeter bolts in there. So I'm also going to do 4.2. I'm going to say cut and what I'm doing here is I'm actually cutting both of those because I'm going to have to put the bolt through here and through there to actually bolt the whole lot together so I'm going to cut and again I'm going to create a pattern a rectangular pattern I'm going to take that face and I'm going to take that face and I'm going to go the direction is going to be that direction and that direction over and down and to oh, why the hell not okay I didn't draw, how could I not have pulled that far enough? Let's go back and edit that. Oh, that's better. Much better. Okay, so done holes all the way down there, down there, and again, just because I'm not crazy about sharp edges, I'm going to sham for that one. And I'll do those very mild five. And okay. All right. And then just a quick once over, I think we're done. And that's pretty much what I had in mind. And it went a lot quicker because I obviously drew it the first time already to get some idea of what I wanted to do. The only thing I'm unsure of is the size of that gap, which is quite big, but I didn't want it too small because what's gonna happen is they'll clamp together and it won't actually bite yet. So I did leave them a little bit bigger that something can be fixed um, and if there's anything else I can think of it's probably that I want to round these edges as well okay so I'm happy with that. I'll go stick that on the printer. I'm guessing this is quite a bit of printing to be done. I'll get that printed and um, catch up again soon. All right, so that'll go on the printer. And that's pretty much it. So once this is done, I'll get that mounted on the monitors and see how that looks. And the next time 
this comes up you should be able to see if this works or if it was a total disaster i'm hoping that it does work but again it's not about the product here it's about actually seeing how i draw different things to make it useful for you to be able to do it that's what we after here let me get this printed we'll see what this looks like if it's good it's good um, i'll share the designs and then you can print them yourself and once again if you patron members i'll actually share the fusion 360 files and you can actually go in and edit the original designs and do with them whatever you like see you in the next one oh wait there i see something odd uh when i brought that down here it doesn't look like it actually cut through the actual middle body and that would suck to find out after you've printed it Oh, what is that? All right, uh, let's check it. That didn't kill anything else. All right, so there again, you saw I went back to the feature, edited it, and just had it cut through all of them instead of just doing another cut. Right, so all the printing is done. It is the day after I recorded the previous video and if you have a look at it you can see there I've actually fitted the bracket on and it actually moves quite nicely and I'm just going to show you how I put them together on here I've got one here that I haven't mounted yet and <clears throat> I've got the two sides and if you look at the bottom of the screen here you'll actually see what this assembly comes together as so the two inner halves are like that which put one at the top one at the bottom and as you can see it's not a not a very tight fit it actually sits quite loosely on there uh, this one drips so I'm gonna put that at the bottom okay so that kind of sits on there and then the screws are uh, four millimeters 40 millimeters long so four by 40 uh, they pretty much go through each of those all right hold on before you put that on you need to put one of these on then those and this thing sits over that kind of like that Look, the others are quite tight as well. They t they're quite tight to start off with, but as they start working in, they do loosen up a bit and they can move around. Uh, you don't want them obviously to move around too much. This isn't a mechanism that's going to move around constantly. Once you find the position you want it in, you're going to lock these nuts down and you don't want it to move after that. So I'm not too worried about it moving around super smooth. It doesn't have to do that. We see this, uh, I'll actually show you what it looks like with uh, some of those monitors on. Okay, so there you've got the bracket. A nice close up to see how that comes together. 
Um, if you look here, I literally just used the two screws in the middle here to screw them in. And if you if you recall, when I was drawing this, I almost even didn't put those in. I was just putting the, the outside four in. Um, the holes are in there for me to actually put screws through there if I wanted to. It, it wasn't necessary. Um, it's holding nice and tight and there's there's no issues with regards to that. I might really look at it and see in a couple of days if, if I have to actually put those screws in. But it's all sitting there nice and tight. I'm, I'm not having any problems with how this has come together, how nice it is holding onto it and the monitor actually sitting where, where they need to do. So that, that really is good. There you can see all four of the monitors on there. Each one has its own bracket. And you can see that depending on which monitors you've got, you're going to slide this up and down here to actually get the monitors closer together, further apart, etc. Uh, the ball joint means it can move up and down, left and right, etc. And because of how this pole sits underneath it here, that's why I can actually rotate those monitors quite a bit and get them where I can see them from the sides. Uh, and there you can see how that works. The uh, Messi workshop is, is optional. Uh, it's probably how the inside of my brain looks as well. It's, it's, it's quite a mess in there. But there you can see what I wanted. I want to be able to be in the workshop on the, on the side over here. There's a CNC machine. And this means I can actually see the path going as, I, as I'm cutting and, and work on it from there. As well as for, for doing things like streams, I can have video up on the, on the monitor and I can actually see how that's working. And that's quite nice because I have actually trouble with that. And then it just turns forward again. And, you know, there you go. It's It sits nicely. The monitors don't move. They, they're up there. They're solid. They, they're sitting like they do. Uh, if you have some trouble with it moving around, I suppose the, the, the thing you could do is lock them down to where you want them. Tighten those nuts so that they, they you know, sit where you want them. If they still move, you know, a few drops of super glue and it, it won't move again. Um, but you know, obviously once you've got your alignment set and the monitor, because once it is set up, there really is no reason to, to move it again. The other thing with that is, is, you know, if, if you ever did want to move it and you've, you've glued the thing down where it is, you can just print new brackets and do it again. So it is something that because it's easy enough to do, there's no problem with being able to do that. There you go, I've got a image and that's actually the, the, the base of this that I've just pulled over all four monitors so you can see how nice it is. Over the bottom monitors here, when you're sitting and you've got that full screen in front of you and you can actually see the, 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 the details, it is surprisingly nice and surprisingly easy to see uh, a lot of detail in there when you zoom right into it. So it is quite nice to be able to see that. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. So. Thank you very much for watching this. It is quite a bit of an investment in time, but I think this project has come out magnificently. So really, really awesome. I'm stoked about what this thing looks like and what it works like. And I think that if you actually made this, you'd, you'd enjoy having this. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, like the video if you like it. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see improved. Uh, I think I'll do a lot more videos that are quite a bit shorter than this. This is a lot of time to, to invest and sit and, and, and go through it. I think I did cover quite a few different things in, in, in Fusion on how to work and how to do different things. And on top of that, it came out with a really nice project to do. And if you're on holiday at the moment, you know, this isn't very, very difficult. It is a bit of printing. The parts aren't difficult. Uh, it's you know the tubing from an antenna and some aluminium square tube other than that some some fastness and things like that it's, it's really a very very simple project to to put together and get done yourself uh, in the end all the, the the plates and stuff are cut out of wood and i just drilled the holes in them by hand i didn't even stick it on the cnc machine it was it was just not worth even the setup to to do it to to get those cuts um, it was just a lot quicker. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Um, let me know what you think of this video. Tell your friends about it. Post on social media. Go nuts. Thank you very, very much. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.